Uh, cool. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tomasz Drwienga. I'm from Parity Technologies. Um, and today I would like to talk uh, light clients. So light clients. What, what do I mean by light clients? Uh, well, light client is, is just a node in a network, but it's kind of a special kind of node. Uh, so what I mean by light is light as in it has low resources usage, usage so all like CPU, memory, storage, and I.O. Uh, it's embeddable, so you can build your own application, and you don't need to run a node um, as a separate process, but you can kind of use a library that will be a light client in your application, in your language. <clears throat> but it's still trustless, so don't confuse it with something that we sometimes call thin clients, so clients that you just run in your browser, and they are just connecting to the, some kind of REST API and get the data, but don't verify the data, data at all, and just trust the, the data provider. So we are heal, here still more secure than, than using the, the thin clients. <coughs> so uh, why light clients? Um, as uh, as the, the guy who was um, introducing me mentioned already, uh, like syncing a full node is really hard these days. So sync time currently is, uh, you, you measure the sync time in days. So it's not hours as it used to be like a year or a year and a half ago. It's now days. The state size is gigabytes. And the entire database, uh, which contains states after every block, also the blockchain data, is actually tens of gigabytes right now if pruned. Um, Light node, on the other hand, you can sync it in seconds. Uh, state size is actually zero, completely zero. And the database, like the, the database size, the entire database that we store is, is in uh, megabytes. Um, and in Parity Technologies, we believe that light clients will be a really important part of, of um, like the future of the centralized networks. And uh, this is kind of reflected in, um, in our latest actions and re latest releases. Um, so as you may have noticed, in Parity Ethereum, we have actually deprecated the, the Parity wallet. So the UI part is actually separate application right now. We are focusing more on the core technology, so running a full node uh, for this kind of like infrastructure level um, uh, providers and running light nodes for casual users on desktops or, or laptops. And um, pretty soon, I hope, uh, within a couple of months, we are going to be releasing a new solution, which is a light node and a light wallet together. And it's actually called Feather. You can go to GitHub. You can see how it works, and you can test it already. There are a couple of releases, as you can see here. Um, and how does it work? Uh, here you can see how sort of a full node works. So when we are syncing a full node, we are actually fetching all the headers from the, from the network. Then for every header, we have a body that contains all the transactions that should be run. And given the previous, um, given the previous state, a state before block one, so for instance, here it, it, it will be a genesis state, and the list of transactions, we can apply those transactions to the state and get a new state after that particular block. Okay? Then we get a block number two. Again, list of transactions. And we have another state after block number two. And uh, some of the nodes, uh, namely archive nodes, they actually store all the states at every block that happened in Ethereum. But obviously, as adapt developers, we are usually mostly concerned with the latest state, so the state after the latest block. So uh, we can, for instance, prune the old, old states, so this will lower our, our database size a little bit. But what we do for light clients, uh, we actually only synchronize headers. So we are not running the transactions. We are not producing those states at all. Uh, we are just checking that the headers are correct. I mean, like they are consistent, and uh, the parent hash actually matches. Um, and also, headers contain like these two things that will be useful for us later. Because the idea is that we don't have the state ourselves. We don't really have the transactions ourselves. But we can ask other nodes in the network to provide us those transactions or the state. But actually, they also have to give us a proof that the data that they provided is correct. So this is a Merkle proof that we can verify by checking the state routes that we actually store. 
Um, obviously, if we would just sync the, um, all the headers, it would still be like a little bit too big. So I think all the headers, there's like, not, what, 5 million blocks. Every header is around 500 bytes. So it would be gigabytes to, to fetch the entire header uh, chain. But we don't have to do that. For light clients, there are a couple of clever tricks that allow us to, to actually start syncing from some particular point, a hard-coded point in a client. Um, yeah, and then how, how is it different to actually build a DAP for a light client in a backend? So uh, we know that there, are, that there are no pending blocks. This is, this is like one of the main differences, because we are not really running the transactions at all. We actually don't even propagate the transactions, because we don't have the state to verify if those, tra those transactions are valid or not. Uh, yeah, we don't have the state at all, actually, right? We don't, we don't have it. Um, we don't have block bodies, uh, and we don't have receipts, so we cannot easily like, get, um, we cannot get the transaction data fast or the results of the transactions fast. And, and there is this network latency involved. So even if you are running light client on your local host, uh, you are doing an RPC query to the light client, but it has to ask uh, peers in a network to get the results. And it increases latency, obviously. And also, some calls are more expensive. Because then the question arises, if my node is actually like um, fetching everything from the network, so it's leeching on the network, um, how do we control, like how do we rate limit those nodes? How do we control that uh, we are not attacking the, the, the full nodes that are providing us data? So currently, in parity light protocol, we have a thing that is called credits. And this is a thing that limits how much um, like computing power of the other node you can actually use. So, and it obviously um, is related to the kinds of queries that you are doing on this, on this remote node. So, so we need to be aware that some of the queries might actually be more expensive than the others. Um, yeah, and then let's see how we can write it up. So as a, as a like, beginning DAP developer, what you might do if you want to write a DAP that actually displays a latest balance of, of someone's uh, token, uh, ERC20 token, you will probably use Web3 for that. And then in this first line, we are creating a contract at some particular address. We are providing an um, ERC20 ABI for that. And then what we are doing, we are setting up an interval. Every 500 milliseconds, we will send a request to the node that will actually query the balance of that particular contract for some address provided here. Okay. So what's the problem with this approach? It will probably work if you are running a full node, like we are asking every 500 milliseconds. But even, even on full node, um, it may it may behave like a little bit unpredictably. Because what if the method actually takes more to execute on the node than this 500 milliseconds? So what happens is we are actually queuing up a lot of requests on the node. And the node is not able to handle them fast enough for you. So sometimes you can even get not the latest balance, but like some you know, straight old call uh, that will be resolved finally. And, uh, if, if we are not able to handle that fast enough, then this will probably break and will crash your node because there will be too many queued connections. Um, so you might go like a little bit smarter. Um, instead of asking in the interval, you can actually wait for the previous call to finish. So this update balance thing is actually doing the same thing as, as previously. But here we have a little bit of logic that says, yeah, we want to update the balance. And only after it finishes, we want to trigger another balance update. But we are trying to target like me average uh, block time size because uh, sorry block time because we know that the balance can only change when the new block is coming to the network, right? So we are waiting for it, and then if it takes five seconds, it's fine. We will run a next balance update in in ten seconds. If it takes 20 seconds, so more than a block, uh, than a block time, then we will actually schedule another call right away to, to, have, to always have the latest balance. Um, luckily, with uh, recent additions to, to Node's RPCs, we can actually subscribe 
uh, if we are using uh, WebSockets transport, obviously, or IPC transport, we can subscribe to the node and be notified about new blocks uh, that are imported by the node. Um, so this is how we use Web3 subscription API. So we say, I want to know when there is a new block imported. And only when there is new block imported, I am updating the balance, the balance uh, that, that, um, in my DAP. Um, yeah, so, so all of this is kind of like patterns that we have to use to write, uh, to write our DAPs. This is kind of like Ethereum development tribal knowledge that everyone has to know. Um, but I think it's, it's actually better to enclose such patterns into libraries and prevent a misuse by providing a good API. So in Parity, we actually had two approaches to this already. Um, the first one is called 007, uh, reactive bonds. Um, and the idea is that we hide all this complexity. We hide um, uh, this all things that you have to think about, like subscribing for new blocks and then asking only uh, when the new block uh, comes into streams that just give you the latest data, and you don't really care how they are updated. So here, you can see I'm importing bonds from 007 parity. Uh, and then I have a bond that represents the block number. And I can map over that bond and display the latest block number on the console. And every time the block number changes, this will be displayed on a console uh, right away. Um, yeah, the second thing that we, you could do was to take one bond and actually compose that bond with some other bond. So for instance, here we have this sort of an object of all possible blocks in a network. And we say, for every block number, so every time the block number changes, I want to fetch the latest block. Then from this latest block, I want to fetch extra data. I want to convert the hex to, to ASCII and display that on console. Right? And then every time the block number changes or the content of the block changes, because we could reorg to uh, some other block, and this would also be handled automatically here, uh, we will get a new, um, a new extra data. Uh, but the problem, so 007 was based on computational graph. So in principle, you could do many uh, of those transitions in parallel. Like the, this parts of the computational graph could be computed in par parallel. but Unfortunately, JavaScript is single-threaded. Um, it was kind of like a simplified version of reactive extensions observables, because we didn't support all the methods. We just tried to make it like, feel natural to work with. Um, it was written in JavaScript uh, without uh, providing uh, TypeScript typings. The documentation was like, a little bit lacking. And we were also using the proxy object. And uh, that could make it a little bit more magical for uh, like, people just trying to use the library. So recently, we have uh, tried a new take uh, on, on the same problem. Uh, and we have worked on Lite.js library. And this is reactive extension, so very similar approach to what we did with, uh, with bonds, but uh, based on reactive ext uh, extensions. And obviously, it still has to be Lite client friendly. So we don't try to expose every RPC method that is there. We try to expose the patterns in which you use uh, those methods and convert them into observables uh, where you don't really need to care about if it's running on a full node, if it's running on a light node, am I like, uh, trying to spam the node right now by doing that? Um, all those patterns that you have to follow if you want to be light client friendly are enclosed in that library, and you are just using this higher level uh, API to, to build your DAP. So it's written in TypeScript, so obviously the typings are there. And the, the, the API right now is, is very minimal and high level. So let me show you how it looks like. Um, you are importing a block number uh, stream from Parity Lite.js. And you are ex uh, importing the RxJS operator to, to uh, modify the stream somehow. And we are subscribing to block number, then piping that through the filter stream. And what we will get, we are subscribing to every second block in the, in the, in the network. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, 
yeah, one more thing. The, the observables, the streams are lazy, so we don't really do that in the background all the time. But only if you subscribe, only if you use it, then we are starting the subscriptions, then we are uh, querying the stuff for you. Uh, so there is like no overhead by just importing the library. Uh, obviously, we support uh, contracts as well. So you can import make contracts from the library. Um, you can provide an address and the ABI. And then we take the stream of default accounts. So every time user changes default account, you'll be uh, notified about that. And then we say, for every uh, default account, we actually want to fetch the balance of that account. And obviously, this is another observable. So uh, whenever the balance changes, you will also be notified um, in the subscribe console log statement. And uh, because in parity, our framework or sh of choice for building uh, front-end applications is, is React, we also have a React integration for, for Lite.js. Uh, so if you want to use these values or that are in those streams in your React components, you don't have to build anything yourself. You are just importing um, a decorator from uh, Lite.js React, and then you say, I want to get sync status, so the values of the sync status uh, in props of the component. And the, the, the higher order component is actually uh, subscribing and providing you the, the, not, uh, the, the latest value to the component. Uh, so yeah, uh, Lite.js is quite minimal currently. It was built to uh, actually build Feather, so this light wallet that I mentioned earlier. And we are still working on the API. Contributions are uh, obviously welcome. You can find us on, on GitHub. Um, and the future, what's, what's coming next? Obviously, we want to extend Lite.js to contain more APIs to enclose more patterns. So uh, um, we are really open for contributions. Um, we might be working on UI component libraries, so not only this, you know, uh, lower level stuff, but higher level components like buttons that you can um, can, uh, can use in your application. And uh, a lot of work in the core part of, um, of Parity, uh, Parity Ethereum client, is to make Parity Ethereum, Parity Ethereum uh, run as a library so that you can compile Parity Ethereum and use it in your Android app, for instance. Obviously, I mean light client uh, of Parity Ethereum. And a second stream is working to compile a Pari Ethereum to WebAssembly so that you will be able to run a light node in your browser. For instance, either as a Chrome extension uh, or like in, on the website itself. So you are just visiting a website. It actually contains Parity Ethereum WASM light client. It's syncing the network right, right away, and you don't have to go to Infura. You don't have to connect to like localhost 8, 8545. Uh, you are just running the light node inside your browser. And that would be about it. So thank you.